Uh, I think I'm going to go to Charlotte and run the cup car there. <laughs> Excellent. Jerry Nadeau never imagined a life without racing. But today, this is what his competition looks like. As a racer, you still like to have the adrenaline rush and, and you still feel like you still can do it. A 30-year-old rising star, Nadeau once drove for NASCAR's premier organization. The one guy who's got a smile at Jerry Nadeau's finish, the team owner, Rick Hendrick. He's led more laps today than in his entire Winston Cup career. You've got to be one proud owner, huh? Yeah, he's doing a heck of a job. Charlotte's been a good track to me over the years. You're basically married to the bottom. I qualified outside pole in 2002 at a 29.09, and Jeff was on pole, I think, with a 29 flat. See the time? God, it feels so good. I was going to say, man. feels like I'm there. Look at this new track record. This is the fastest I ever went here. I love racing. <laughs> and this all started with you just deciding on a whim. I got $150 in my pocket, and I'm driving to Charlotte, my beat-up old car, and I'm going to make this happen. Well, it's like, do I want to shingle houses the rest of my day and race on the weekends you know i had the heart to make it and i think anybody that wants to be somebody they can do it you know it's how much drive they have i made it the interval is 1.2 seconds between they do and dale earnhardt and in november of 2000 Winston Cup win in his 103rd race, the fourth first-time winner at 2000. Yeah, this is one of my favorite photos, obviously, with Dale. Um, you know, my first race I did, he shook his fist at me like, get the hell out of the way. And then the last race he did, uh, he gave me the thumbs up. It was the biggest day of his career. <laughs> Two and a half years later, the worst. What do you remember about that day? I remember breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I remember oatmeal and toast. Um, but I don't, I don't remember anything uh, of the accident. Nadu was one of the fastest drivers in practice at Richmond Raceway when his car slammed into the wall. Driver side first. It was a perfect hit. It was a perfect accident. Um, perfect in a bad way that the, the yeah. angle and the, the force like you said it was was it more than 100 times the force it of was, gravity yeah, it was 100 i think it was 121 g's mm -hmm. uh twice in a millisecond um they did mention to me that my body weighed at like 16,000 pounds uh, in a millisecond um obviously the brain can only take so much it slapped the side of my skull and it did some damage to the thalamus nadu spent nearly three weeks in a coma all I know is when I was starting to get up from the induced coma, I'm looking around the room and I'm thinking, why are these people working so hard? Um, everything was really slow to me. Everything was really vague, you know, kind of like you were stuck in a cloud and you couldn't get out of it. I did everything I could, mm -hmm. uh, every rehab, everything I can do to produce, to make things better. My left side's uh, kind of asleep. It's still in that numbness feeling. Uh, tingles 24-7. You know, unfortunately, when you scramble the brains a little bit, you know, what you have is what you have after that. But I'm here. What kind of support did you get from the NASCAR community through that? The fans were incredible. One of the cool things, obviously, is all the letters that I got. Get well soon. Come back. We're devoted fans. Yeah, it's touching. Get well, get well, get well. We miss your smiling face. NASCAR needs you to come back. We miss you. It's so sad because people see you from the outside and they're like, God, you look fine. Why aren't you racing? You know, after what Dr. Petty said when he said, um, you know, choose another profession, it, it literally killed me. And when you're out, you're out. It's sad, but you're almost kind of forgotten. You haven't been to a race since? No, since I, I did go to Charlotte uh, last year, walked around the pits with a friend, and they're really grateful. They're good, mm -hmm. uh, the NASCAR folks, and they opened their arms for, for me to go. But There's something about a driver being at a race yeah, and not driving. It, it doesn't just, feel right. It doesn't, it doesn't turn me on, not being able to do what you like. Get in, 
Hurry up. You know, being a racer your whole life. Uh, oh. These days, Nadu earns a living hosting okay. thrill rides for manufacturers like Dodge and Jeep. Want to go swing? Come on, we'll go swing. <laughs> One of the big reasons we're here, Jerry, is because you've agreed to pledge your brain to the Concussion Legacy Foundation. They're very much in the study and research of head injuries. Had you had any uh, concussions? prior to the Richmond crash? You think oh, there were more than a few? Yeah. yeah, quite a bit. I, I, I do remember at times being, I was knocked out in the middle of the road on Marybrook Road in Connecticut mm -hmm. on a three-wheeler. There's been many. I, I mean, I can probably list seven or eight concussions mm -hmm. in my life. Obviously, if they can learn something from my injury, I'd be glad to. Did you know much about it when you started racing? No. Nothing about it at all? No. Just, I never just was talked about. I never, you know, just take that magic pill, feel better, and go back. You know, go go race. Oh, Obviously, things are way better now. The cars are way safer. The helmets, the Hans device, and, and obviously the tracks. Six. No, that's a nine. It's all about evolving things, you know? Things got to happen before you fix it. Your crash led to safer barriers virtually everywhere by yeah. the start of the next season. It takes those incidents to get the advancements. Yeah. yeah.